So Preston, we're going on a field trip. Grab your pitchforks, your ropes, your chains, your ski masks, whatever you need. We're going on a <laughs> trip to George R. R. Martin's house. He gave us permission to imprison him to finish Winds of Winter, and that's what we plan on doing. He gave us permission to, yeah, gave us permission to kidnap him. Um, it's true. Yeah, I mean, it's not surprising, though, that, that he missed another deadline, of course. Of course. This better be the greatest book I mean, of all fucking time. I mean, he had an... See, so the minute COVID started, I knew he wasn't going to make the deadline. So, so for, for everyone, George R. R. Martin had said that he won't go into any conventions until he finishes Winds of Winter. And then he kind of announced that, oh, I, I, I like going to this, this one convention every year. And this year it's in New Zealand. And so I can't imagine myself not being finished by the time this convention happens. Um, and if I'm not finished, you have you have permission to kidnap me, you, you know, and force me to write the book or something, something along those lines. I don't I don't have the exact and anyway, New Zealand mm -hmm. con. Anyway, COVID happened and New Zealand con, it, it 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 wasn't canceled, but it went virtual. And, you know, it's not we, we all know that all these virtual things are not as great as <laughs> as in-person things. I mean, it's fine. But um, and and of course, you know. That that day came and that day went and we got no announcement on uh, the winds of winter. So <clears throat> he missed another deadline, but I kind of knew that he would use it as an out. Like it wasn't a real convention, and so he didn't really have the motivation to get the book done by the time of the convention. And so he just he didn't do it. I don't understand. Like the other ones didn't take uh, that long to come out. I think I think the at the time. What was it? I think Feast to Dance was the longest before this, which I think was five or six years, something like that. Yeah, but you could look at it in another way and say that that Feast and Dance are essentially one mm -hmm. book. In fact, some people would even argue that Feast and Dance is an incomplete book, that he he uh, he never really finished it um, because, you know, it does it doesn't close thematically like like, say, a Game of Thrones does. Um, or a Storm of Swords does, where like, you know, all the characters come to a, a, a kind of major change point, and it, you know things aren't really on a on a big cliffhanger. Like every like plot is with with um, a Dance with Dragons and a Feast for Crows. I mean, I'd say that the one plot that's that kind of is is um, brought to an ending is John's, but most everybody else. You're you're kind of cut off before the real ending. Like we don't get the Battle of Fire, we don't get the Battle of, of Ice, we don't we don't you know the Battle of Steel at Storm's End, the Battle of Blood in 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 Old Town. Like all of these things aren't really at any sort of thematic conclusion. They're all just at a at a um, at a, at a cliffhanger. And and he admits that you know the book was supposed to be lo longer and include these things, and he just. It, they'd, it'd gotten too un, unwieldy and, and out of control. But so if we look at it that way, that was a long way of saying, if we look at it that way, you could say that A Feast for Crows, A Dance with Dragons took 11 or 10 years to come out. That is true, because you know, Thrones came out in 96, Clash of Kings, 98, Swords, uh, 2000, and then Feast for Crows, 2005, then Dance in 2011. So if they come yeah. out next year, it'd be 10 years so I wonder how yeah. long Dream of Spring will be out because you firmly believe there's no way Dream of Spring is going to be the last one. I don't. I, I'm I'm inclined to agree as well because there's too much there's too much story yeah. to fit in a in a Dream of Spring, but um, there's just too much story. Uh, and if if the story is taking him this long, that means it's gotten bigger, not smaller. Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, oh, you know it's it's. He doesn't. He, he doesn't know how to reel in the story. Uh, he's lost control of it. Which is which. You know. Oh, well. And what was your calculation um, on the whole like how many chapters he's gotten done? Some people have done these the, this this sort of math in his writing pace. I will say that all of those calculations are out the, are out the window because, you know, it, it's very clear to me that he goes months at a time without writing and then goes into these spurts because he'll. He'll, he'll write a blog and say, oh, I had this really great week and I wrote three chapters. And you're like, what? Because if you were, if you were on that pace, we would have a book, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's not like he's sitting down and he's writing every day, even though he claims he's writing every day. 
Um, but I mean, writing wild cards. You, not really, well, he doesn't write wild cards, or he hasn't written wild cards um, since A Dance with Dragons came out. He hasn't written a wild cards wild card story. He edits wild mm. cards, um, but he hasn't written a wild card wild card story in in quite some time. Um, so he, because uh, wild cards is you know uh, multiple authors write the stories, and then they they usually. The books are different, but usually it's like, you know, there's there's 15 chapters and 15 authors wrote, like, you know, a different chapter of the book, you know. Um, so, I mean, if he wrote every day, which he isn't, but he if he wrote every day, he would have only needed to write 125 words um, in order to have finished the book by now. But... He hasn't been writing every day, so, <laughs> so that's that's what I put it. Like people are always like, "What, really? 125 words? Like 125 words is, is nothing. It's half a paragraph, you know? Like, yeah, that's all." It takes. Yeah, well, 125 words is the amount of words George R. R. Martin uses to describe a chicken leg a character is eating. It's nothing, <laughs> yeah, right? You know, like oh, a greasy cape on, you know, and then next came the buttered beets, you know, and wh- whatever, and 100. Next thing you know, 125 words is gone. Um, but that that's. That's all he needed to write was 125 words. Um, And that's based on the length of A Dance with Dragons divided by the number of days it's been since A Dance with Dragons was released. But, uh, But of course, like, he took a break after A Dance with Dragons was released for a long time, and then he got busy with with Game of Thrones, and he was writing episodes of Game of Thrones, and then, um, and then, I don't know. I think he, I think... If I were George R. R. Martin, I would be changing the story. <laughs> you des- desperately want him to change the story. I think maybe Dave and Dan will surprise us. Maybe I'm being a little hopeful because one of the dumbest things in the entire um, the show was Alaria being this vengeful person, which she's not in the books. Maybe it's Alaria pulling yeah. the strings and uh, maybe she will be the one that ends up killing Marcella. Maybe we're wrong <laughs> and this was George's vision the entire time. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that... Alaria, like there's not, there's not, it's not that there's zero evidence that Alaria is a player because there is some evidence that Alaria is a player, but it's very minute. Like it's, it, there's not much. It's, it essentially comes down to that she has um, placed the younger sand snakes in interesting locations. So like her, saying like oh I, like war is coming but i i, I want to keep my children safe and then she takes then she takes elia sand and pops her with ariana on her quest and pops another sand snake with um with doran at at the um at the water gardens and stuff and it's like well are are those kids spying what are those kids doing cuz elia sand if you remember like she starts making out with Feathers, and Feathers is the guy who controls the ravens. So she happens to be, you know, really close to the guy that has all the important messages, which is, you know, that's, that's not nobody. You know? So if you want to be suspicious, there, there's some evidence that maybe Alaria is a player. Well, we've, we've seen Even characters use uh, children before, as spies before, so why not Alaria? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Varys and his little mm-hmm. birds, you know. Um, you know, so uh, it, it, it's, certainly, it's certainly possible. I'm not saying it, there are some seeds planted. And I'm not saying that Alaria is a player, um, but I think George R. R. Martin put some, some maybe seeds in case he wants to make her a player. So we'll see. We'll see. But when do you realistically expect uh this book to come out because i always thought back when the show was coming out i always thought okay this would be the uh, sixth book so it has to be coming out during the sixth season or maybe after season five yeah nope never okay well the show is ending yeah. in 2019 maybe as it's ending he announces the book is coming out no all right 2020 this year definitely no it's not uh 2021 what's that looking like i mean i think he's I think he's definitely doing some rewrites, uh, if, if I were to really guess. I mean, here's the thing, is if you, if you had your magnum opus novel, this, this is Carmine, pretend you're a great writer, just imagine for a moment you're a great writer, and you have your magnum opus, like 
that you have written, you have spent, you have spent 25 years writing this story. And then there's an adaptation and they finish the adaptation. You tell them the major plot points of it and then they, and then they put it to screen and it's meh, okay? Would you go back home and write those same plot points that were, that were already revealed in the show? Or would you write different plot points? I think it would be more of a challenge to write the same plot points but make it better in a, in a, in a way to show off your, how your writing skills or my writing skills are better than the showrunners. Because um, I, f I forgot who said this. I think they said uh, that George was low-key um, throwing shade on Dave and Dan when uh, during the Alice Sane chapter, yeah. which we just did in Fire and Blood, how it took Alice Sane yeah. a long time to get from Winterfell to the Wall. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, very low, low, you know, low key shade. I mean, there's a few. Like, like when you you pointed out how there was that in Fire and Blood, the line about how faceless men are never that are never that sloppy. It's not like they're running around town making making a, a, a scene. And you're like, uh, that definitely sounds like some shade being thrown at the uh, at the the Arya um, waif uh, fight in the streets mm -hmm. like scene. You know, like it definitely. But uh, I mean, I see what you're saying, but that's a really fucking hard task to be like. You know what? You already know how this story is going to end. I'm going to make it great anyway. You're like, really? That's, that's tough. Well, it would, it would be Especially a monument to his skill though, right? Sure. Sure. It just seems impossible. I don't that know. seems like the ultimate challenge of anybody. I mean, cause, cause the show is, I, I, I would argue the show is good even up to season five. A lot of people shit on season five. I actually quite like mm. it. I think season six is where it jumps the shark and we'll discuss that later. I, I was also thinking about whether he's changing things or what, you know, uh, so Dragon Demands had a big video uh, a week ago about how Mad Queen Daenerys was not the original like ending to the show. Oh yeah, yeah, he uh, messaged me about that. So, do you remember? Do you remember in my um, Game of Thrones fixed uh, uh, videos that I had the ending of the show being Ares's wildfire going off and destroying King's Landing, and not it being an intentional burning by Daenerys? Right. Apparently, that was the real ending. Well, we saw bits and pieces of that during the actual sacking of King's Landing. Yeah, but apparently, in the script. Like, he, he, Dragon Demand's got the original script. In the original script, it was green fire everywhere blowing up. That it was Ares' wildfire destroying the city. That Daenerys destroys it by accident. Which, by the way, was coincidentally how I ended it. <laughs> because, like, why would, you, why would you have these caches of wildfire? Like, they're, they're such a Chekhov's gun. Like, why would you have caches of wildfire into the city that aren't going to be aren't going to like destroy the city. Right. You know? And uh, it's funny enough because he did send me a, he did send me a private message about this dragon demands. And I asked him like, dude, how do I know this is legit? Like, why would these writers randomly tell you anything? And he, and he made well, a, he went and went to an archive well, he, yeah, and got, and got like a script from an archive. Not something. only that, but apparently he answered me. He goes, well, I just asked and they gave it to me. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, so it may be that Dan and Dave deviated from the plot points that George gave him or it, but I don't think they deviated. I mean, like, I, I do think that the Mad Queen is, is, I think it's a dumb idea in general. Um, I just, I think a lot of people got to the end of A Dance with Dragons and they, they got the wrong message about Daenerys's visions of Vis Viserys and how like, you waited around in Marine. Targaryens don't sow, they burn. And I think, and then some people asked George some questions at a con and, and it suddenly it became like fan canon that, there, that the Mad Queen thing was gonna happen. And so I think something like that happened with, with Dan and Dave. I, I don't know if like Daenerys is really gonna go insane in the books. If she does, it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem useful or legitimate. Like why show this incredible backstory to a woman and have her growth as a character only to reveal that she's insane in the end and that 
you know, Targaryen genetics like Doomer from the beginning. To make to make the reader uh, conflicted. One of the one of the reasons I love the Infinity War thing with Marvel is like you know Thanos you, you kind of like sympathize with him just a little bit you know the the oh, best sure. villains are the ones you can sympathize with and especially since we're following Daenerys and you know her journey it makes her actions even though she could be doing horrible things the fact that we're following her and getting inside her mind and seeing her grow as a person and getting closer to her in that way I mean we're more inclined to defend her actions even though they're insane. So, yeah, but I just I I think it's kind of weird because it's having it's trying to have it both ways. Like it's the same with they do the same thing with Viserys, where you kind of you meet Viserys and you're led to believe that it's the experience he had of running from place to place and slowly selling all of his family's possessions and being told that you were a king, but now you're a beggar that eventually drove him to, to have this personality. And then later we meet Barristan, and Barristan's like, no, from the beginning there was something off about Viserys. And you're like, what? Like, then what was the point of that backstory? <laughs> like, what? You can't be led to a, that position and, or, and then also be, you know, just inherently crazy from the get-go and it didn't matter. Like, it's, uh, I don't know. I. I don't like that. Like, like I, w one way or the other, either he's a product of his environment or he's, or he's you know, insane from the beginning. I think that's the point, uh, though, that the fact that you don't like that, that it's making you invoke that emotion. I think it's supposed to do that. I mean, I, mean, I guess. I guess you're supposed to. I mean, I guess that's the human condition, mm -hmm. that, like, half of us, half of our situation is nature and half is nurture. But, um, and it doesn't even make sense when Barristan says that because it's like, wait, Barristan, you fled east in order to find Viserys, and yet you thought he was insane? Like, it doesn't make any sense, you know, <laughs> Barristan, but okay, <laughs> fine. It's, you know, it's one of the mistakes, it's one of the weird mistakes in the book that, that, that gets me, is Barristan's reaction, Barristan's story about Viserys and, and his actions. I, 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 don't, I don't like it, I don't think it makes sense. Um, and I don't like I don't like the idea of 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 Daenerys being insane um, because of her Targaryen blood. Because then you also have her experiences, and then also you have people messing with her mind, like Quaith. So it, it's like, what's making her insane? I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. Getting back to all of it, I hope I hope that there is no Mad Queen in the books. I hope that the story that George is changing the story. I, it would explain why it's taking so long. 